guys, how's it going? Today I want to give you a tour through our garden before June is out. It's supposed to be 108 degrees today. So we thought we would give you kind of a look at how our garden's faring through all the heat. We're not getting as hot as some people like in Seattle and Portland, like they're actually getting hotter than we are, which is crazy crazy to me and we are fairly acclimated and used to the heat not 108 that's that's extreme um, but we're used to you know 100 102 right around there is where we typically get for weeks during the summer and I think once you get over 100 it just gets hard on everything it gets hard on us it gets hard on our plants but there's so much I want to update you guys on in the garden I do have my coffee right now and I'm going to carry it around because 6:45. Erin's sister actually came in this morning. The kids are still asleep, but she's in there with the kids in case they wake up. Uh, but I wanted to start right here, kind of by our back kitchen entrance, because I wanted to show you the incredible hydrangeas. This is the best year so far. A couple of reasons why. We planted them several years ago. There was a rose garden here, and it was just like overgrown. I, we probably have pictures. I mean, the roses came out into the walkway. For those of you guys who haven't seen back those older garden tours, it was just kind of a little bit unkept. Um, so we have brought in some uniformity with the incredible hydrangeas, which when I planted them, they were all kind of damaged and smashed because I, um, I took them from the garden center after a storm came through and it knocked a big tree down on top of all of them. So they had broken branches all over and I knew they would rebound, but I knew that it would take a while. So this year I feel like most of them are the most full that they have been. Uh, and then also Erin has been treating lots of things with chelated iron this year. So we're not dealing with as much yellowing of the leaves um, at this point of the season. There are some things like the red point maple that are severely chlorotic, but they're starting to come back. So, I mean, we're, we're really happy with how that chelated iron's working. We'll probably do like a full video on that, I'm sure at some point, because Aaron's out here like multiple times a week giving things iron that he sees. Not to the same plants, I have to clarify, but to things that he's noticing looking yellow. <laughs> New plants, not chelated iron every day <laughs> to the same plants. Uh, Munstead Lavender Hedge is looking beautiful. It's been in bloom for a little while. Um, we do cut our lavender back pretty hard, um, like. I don't let it create a woody base so that I can control its size a little bit. And I really love it here, but I think it's gonna be something that's going to have to be moved at some point pretty soon because to get electric to our greenhouse that's being installed right now, we have to tear up the sidewalk and trench the electric down this way. The other option was to go through an area that has multiple water lines that feed multiple parts of our property. We'd have to cut through those as well as, I think there's, gas is further down right it's not this far so that but there's electric on this side too i'm not sure all the stuff but we were talking to the electrician and he was like oh this is the easiest and if you were planning a redo i'm like well that's great let's just add one more project to the list this year so uh you know i don't know i don't know if we're gonna tear this up and just like put gravel down for a little while or mulch down for a little while that'll be fun tracking that in the house until we're ready to do this project but it will be easier to get electricity so if you look right through here here. Sorry, Erin. <laughs> don't, don't fall over anything. Look at that kind of natural window by the fireplace area. That's where you'll see the Hartley like very soon. I'm so excited. Every step that they do and we'll show you, it's just so exciting to me. Okay. Uh, I don't even know which direction to go, but this uh, area, especially from like this angle has really been filling in nicely. This spring, it was glorious. Like it was so glorious, I can't even explain. Like the white bleeding hearts blooming with all of the, I had a peach cobbler and white lion daffodils thick in this area. I think we planted like, I don't know, a thousand daffodils in this one little area. And it was a sea of daffs and white bleeding hearts and the autumn frost hostas there in the corner. Everything was just absolutely gorgeous. And it is filling in. We've got hostas in here. Um, there's things I need to cut back, but we're just kind of like hanging on and not doing a lot of work out here, except for early morning stuff. So like def, uh, delphiniums rather need to be cut back there. Uh, we did not shape any boxwoods. So as we go through this garden, you will see all of our boxwoods more natural. <laughs> they're, they're fluffier. We ran out of time. And honestly, I think that the, they look better than they ever have. We have uh, fewer like dead spots. We have less, sorry for the noise if you can hear that. They are working on the Harley this morning. Um, whenever we shear back, it's like we never have a window that's proper for shearing and we always get brown tips. Um, so it's kind of nice to see them looking so vibrant and green, but I am craving a little bit of like, at this point, a little bit of tidiness would be kind of nice, but that's okay. I, for the health of the plants, I think it's good. Surefire rose begonias right here. 
they're starting to put on a little bit of bulk. I'm excited. We had a coconut nemesia here for several months, looked gorgeous, but I think it was finally succumbing to the amount of water it was getting. Um, it had perfect light, I think, but it gets a ton of overspray. In fact, we don't have drip in this bed until about, I wanna say the drip starts about here because this whole bed gets water every single day from the grass. So I'm thinking like a lime green potato vine would be perfect right here. It's just like a little ground cover and a little bright pop of, of green. You'll notice that the bricks are still here. Uh, they are gonna have to come down through here to get electricity because there's the Hartley right there. Um, so we're, we are planning on doing something different. I have zero idea as to what we're gonna do in this area, but I know it will be changed at some point. Um, but I couldn't bear tearing up more areas until it's absolutely necessary. So like this will go at some point, you see we didn't even plant it this year. We have been watering the firelight hydrangeas that I planted last, it must be fall, last, fall before last. Anyway, um, we've been watering those because I will move them. There's no drip to this bed, we cut that. So um, anyway, we'll water those through the season and then when it's a proper time to move them, I will do that. Uh, we've got the butterfly garden right here. Good morning. Butterfly garden is full of gorgeous stuff. When you plant things when it's so hot, everything just like wilts. It looks almost like, like I shouldn't have planted. <laughs> so I panic and I come out here in the middle of the day and I water everything, even though it's all getting drip twice a day in this area, everything picks back up in the evening. And Benjamin was pretty engaged in the process. I didn't know at three years old how he was gonna do with this. Uh, I just hope that every year I wanna do fun projects and we'll see what he remembers later on. He was engaged in the plant picking out at the garden center. He picked out a whole box full of plants and it was hard, it was hard. Like I just let him pick out whatever he wanted, but I was kinda like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I don't know if that's gonna work, but you know what, we planted everything, it looks great. And I planted everything exactly where he told me, even like the zinnia right here, right in between the lavender. I had to bump one plant back just a little bit because he put it right up against the lavender, but I think it's gonna be gorgeous. Um, I, I had his attention until Aaron drove by on the lawn tractor and he was like, oh, a machine, I need to go ride that. The sunflowers are up though. It only took a couple of days and they just popped out of the ground. That's one wonderful thing about heat is that it does make things grow fast. Um, so we can get a lot of production. Our season is really long. I mean, typically, sometimes we're planting in like late February and typically we can go all the way through October. That's a long growing season. Um, so, I mean, I'm still starting crops like sunflowers at the end of July and I still get flowers and or uh, fruit production on a lot of vegetable plants um, if we started them that late, which I'm, I really am thankful for. But this will be beautiful because they swing around the back side of the fence. We'll have a bank of sunflowers back here. I think the only thing I'm missing in here for this year anyway is some lights. I think we need to incorporate like some fairy lights somehow. I think that'll be nice. You can see the pallet walkway right behind. In fact, let's just pop over there toward the chicken coop. We'll come back to the Hartley. He's kind of working on it right now, so I don't want to get in his way. Right here we have that cute little rocking bench from far west that Aaron and I picked up when we went over there and picked up trees. This isn't the, like the best, <laughs> the best place to have it, but it looks so cute next to the butterfly garden. I'm trying to think, like I wonder if I could uh, work on the bricks right under where it's at, so maybe it'll rock a little bit better. But we've got a few hanging baskets in this area. Um, they're doing pretty good. This is my favorite. So the, these are the 2022 recipes for proven winners. I love, this one that just plays on leaf color and texture. There's the um, licorice vine and a chocolate drop coleus and a sweet potato vine that's dark colored and I think it's just so beautiful. Um, this is another one and then this one's struggling a bit. I'm not really sure what's going on there except for we have a super bells in with, with other plants and I struggle with that. I cannot get things to look good where they have a mixture of super bells with anything else. I have to have super bells on their own and kind of treat them as their own entity. Anyway, I'm hoping that it maybe rebounds. We'll see, maybe the heat will help. Over here, we have a nice little grouping. In fact, this is, well, it's a little bit of a messy time of year because the golden rain tree is in full bloom. It's glorious. I would not trade this tree, even though like it blooms and drops, it's yellow blue, but they're beautiful. It's like yellow confetti. So it drops its blooms everywhere. And then they create those little lantern seed pods, which I love to use in decorating. Those lantern seed pods, Oh my, did you hear that cat? I think that's probably Cheddar defending his territory against one of the wild cats around here. 
Cheddar is kind of fierce that way. Anyway, um, so each one of those pods usually contains like one to three seeds and those seeds come up everywhere in our garden. They're, it's kind of noxious, but it's gorgeous with its uh, multiple trunks and its canopy and you can't put a price on the shade, especially this time of year. This is where we sit most of the time, like in the evenings. In fact, I brought Samantha out here when it had cooled off enough, she loves it outside. I mean, it's her favorite. If she's fussy at all, the second I get her outside, it's like instant happy and she coos. I'm like, oh, she's my girl. She's an outside girl. But we came out here and sat for a long time and she just loves looking up in the tree and looking around and just seeing what's going on around her. But this is kind of a fun little grouping of plants. We've got a Japanese maple. Um, we've got my little bird topiaries here. Some um, pistachio hookahs, pretty pistachio, which I just did singles and I love it. Uh, I've even got a Japanese maple that I need to pot still. It's still in the uh, plastic container. I've got a terracotta pot. I just haven't gotten around to getting it potted. Um, and then I love how this one's uh, filling in. This is the cloud white, the la, um, Laguna cloud white lobelia. It's a new one for next year from Proven Winners and it's doing great. Lobelia for me is a little tough in the heat and these are holding up beautifully. Uh, and it's got the albrito coleus, which I used in a lot of different areas. And I think it's one of my favorite coleuses right now. Is coleus is a word? <laughs> So I think the plural of coleus is coleus, right? Coleus. Coleus, <laughs> not coleuses. <laughs> anyway, there's so many things I say and then I'm like, oh, that didn't sound right. Uh, we've got just a menagerie of other things. And this is an olive tree right here. My first year with it, it looks happy. Um, we do let it dry out between watering and so far so good. So right here, so we've got the albrito coleus again. And isn't this beautiful like this? these containers are so pretty to me we're like everything's doing pretty well and uh, we're trying out several different new things this year so the albrito coleus and then we've got like the james pretenia this is the safari dawn and it's holding its own in this container providing some really sweet color and flowers um, and then here we still have the pallet walkway which i will probably still keep in some capacity i mean it may stay the same in terms of shape it might change depending on how we do the design but i think the pallet walkway um, and i don't know i'm interested in so many different styles but like the rustic with the refined with the hartley i think that there's a really um a fun opportunity to have that juxtaposition and i think it's good to have that whimsical like look in the garden next to something so formal and this fits with our chicken coop beautifully i think it all goes together really nicely you can see the the uh, umbrella up for the chickens i also installed a mister system last night i give them frozen treats last night i gave them a whole bag of frozen blueberries um and anyway they seem to be happy through it all but you might remember that i planted a bunch of seedlings flower seedlings from the milk jugs these are milk jug seedlings right here the pink cushion flower, the black beauty right here. Absolutely beautiful. Prairie Sun Rudbeckia just starting to bloom. That made Benjamin so excited last night. He was like, look mom, it growed up. That's what he tells me about everything. It growed up. Uh, I think that he can sense my excitement when I see something that is like, that looks pretty. And yeah, he was very excited about that. We've got the amazing gray poppies right in here. Mine are like small. Is that? normal i don't know if those are supposed to be like a bigger poppy but i was expecting them to be a little bit bigger a beautiful color just kind of like a gray almost like a creamy gray with a touch of lavender in it and i like it i think maybe yeah we can go this way we've got a wisteria on this arbor right here which may have been a mistake because this arbor is quite small and you guys know how big a wisteria gets um, so we're constantly hacking on it. It's really a beautiful vine, um, but who, who knows? We may end up doing something a little different here. I think we'll go around the other side of the chicken coop because the light is very, very harsh. And I'm not sure it's actually picking up nicely in the camera. So can we go to the front yep. of the chicken coop? I'm actually not sure we've ever done an early morning garden tour before, have we? We're always worried about the light. So hopefully everything looks okay. It is a lot more comfortable out here right now for sure. Um, I need to come through and deadhead the roses. These are the peachy cream, oh so easy peachy cream. There are some newer uh, buds on here, but most of most of them are spent and I need to kind of clean them up. But the Osteo Bright Lights Pink are coming into their own. We cut them back hard when we planted them. Um, we have some Indiglo Girl Salvia. It still has a little bit of color and I'm a little bit, there's been so many bees on everything 
that I'm a little tentative like to cut anything back until it's completely bloomed out so that they can you know utilize all everything from the blooms but there's a butterfly bush back in there a miss violet the zephyrines I need to clean those up as well it's just a lot of maintenance uh, work that we need to do this time of year rather than planting because planting is really not ideal to do when it's 108 out um, I hung a burlap sack up in this window I do have a second chicken curtain I just need to locate it I think I know where it's at I just need to there was two in the package that was sent to us so I think I uh, will repeat that one here so we've got some cohesion going on um, right around here I did fill this up with annuals we had that on a video though so I won't really spend a lot of time there but everything is doing pretty good I do come through um, midday and I water all of the super tunias because they're like oh <laughs> you know just kind of um, like just trying to deal with the heat but it is like really full back in here so right here so this whole area you know is going to change in some capacity and I just gave the guys just free access to however they need to get to the structure to with their machines and their trucks they can do that and not to worry about our plants are, you know, and they've all been really respectful and they have tried really hard to stay away from, you know, edges of things, but the concrete truck had to come through the other day and it couldn't quite make the turn. So it went through, there was no plants here, but it went through and it clearly, if there's some water that broke somewhere down in here. Um, so we have like a slow leak going on. I thought about just popping a bunch of Prince Tuts right here the other day or Vertigo's. Um, and just let the grasses use all the water but um, this will all likely change anyway so it, it didn't like bum me out to see the brick edging just kind of an upheaval because it's going to need to come out anyway probably so um, and you can see the concrete pad from the pergola is still there it's actually nice because every truck that drives up on it is kind of like crunching it further so it'll come up a lot easier in, in smaller chunks um, but everything is going to change pretty drastically I would say on the left side of the pathway over i think most all of that is going to change so it's exciting very exciting let's run over to the hartley really quick because it looks like he's just gathering up some supplies we'll take a look at what's going on this is the north side of the hartley right here and let's move down this pathway a bit so you can see beyond this big pile of dirt but the doorway comes out on the back side um, so we have a front door and a back door I, that was pretty important to me to because with the gazebo I always did appreciate that you could, you could um, access it from multiple points it made moving through the garden very easy and then on this side we're actually gonna have a sink on the in interior here and then the water will come out from underneath the footer and there will be a drain right here so that we can still have we'll have um, active water all year in the greenhouse which makes me excited to do that oh look at this when the concrete truck came in our grass was pretty darn wet and um, yeah it's just part of the process <laughs> right here and it, it actually is kind of um, like the positive side of seeing a huge rut in your lawn is the fact that like now I feel really free to just tear up the grass <laughs> We can tear up the grass, kind of retool over here, do something different, and that's exciting because it was gonna to have to be repaired anyway. Oh, it's nice right here, right, right here in the shade. Um, so the front of the greenhouse, if you get in there closer, you can actually see that the front doorway won't like appear to come out, not on the bottom anyway, because we have two cold frames one on either side of the door and we decided to do the cold frames up here because this is the south side so it'll gather the most sun the most heat um, and I think that'll look charming to have the little it has those little doors that kind of pop up like that and then um, the rest of the doorway like the actual door where you walk through will be a lot taller so you'll still see that like visually it'll come out from the rest of the building but it's just it's going so great over here and every time they are here working on it I see something new like happen and it's just so exciting uh, concrete's been interesting though so it's on will call at the moment I think it's the same for the whole country isn't it like it's just like a shortage is what I heard shortage of concrete or something I'm not sure what's going on but you're put on a list and you basically just have to wait until you get a call that there's concrete available um, so that's kind of where we're at with the stem wall that's where we were at with the footers they got the forms up and then they just had to wait for the call um, so they got that part done but uh, the Hartley was delivered yesterday like the metal and glass it's here I'll show you uh, right behind the triangle garden here in a minute uh, but I kind of while we're here let's swing over to this flower bed 
I will show you a sunflower that I've been hiding from Aaron, or not hiding, but not pointing out to Aaron until now. <laughs> Look it. The sun. <laughs> you, do you see it? <laughs> Don't you touch it. <laughs> so we've got a bunch of roses in here, um, and I need to come through and do some cleanup here as well. This will be a per actually a great time of day to do it, first thing in the morning, as it's all in the shade. Um, but yeah, sunflowers have just been popping up everywhere. I think it's because we had that huge patch of, patch of sunflowers out in our cut flower garden. And I think the birds took after them and then just dropped seeds everywhere. And we just have like sunflowers popping up all over. Uh, there are worse things than having sunflowers pop up all over. And this one's almost ready to bloom. So we're just gonna leave it for now <laughs> until it's done blooming. This area right here is full of hellebores. There's hostas if you look through there. I know it's pretty bright. Hopefully it looks okay. And then the most beautiful hydrangeas, which look better than they have in a long time. Last year they struggled because they were so chlorotic. This year uh, with Aaron's chelated iron, they're looking a heck of a lot better. Um, so I'm really, really happy with how this bed is filling in. Now I did pop in here. I don't know if you can see those, the newly noir coleus. I put a big drift in there. I think that's gonna be a really pretty thing to see fill in behind those. Um, is it, are those Invincible Ruby or Invincible? Mini Mauvette. Min no, I think those are Invincible Rubies. Aaron said, we'll put it on the screen. I always think that you're mic'd up when you're not. Oh, uh, let's run back and look at the Hartley. Let me set my co coffee down because it's gone. <laughs> this flower bed right here actually hasn't changed at all. I haven't planted a single thing. I'm a little reluctant to do anything in any of the flower beds that face this lawn and face the Hartley because I feel like in the end, I might retool at all. I might redo the, oh, I probably will. I'll redo the lines and make the flower beds, the borders a little bit deeper. I may cut into the lawn like in the middle here. I'm not sure because now that we're going to have the huge lawn up front, I don't feel so much like I need to keep this huge chunk of grass right here. I feel like maybe we could do roses or maybe we could do something really neat in this space, but I'm just not sure. So I've just kind of left everything alone. Everything's doing well, thriving. That's all, all I need right now. The serendipity alliums that I planted earlier this season, so many of them came from around the gazebo, and then I planted a couple extras that I had in the greenhouse. They're about ready to burst into bloom. That's gonna be gorgeous. And then right here, here's the Hartley. Can you believe that? I can't even believe it. it's just sitting on our gravel driveway right now. And you can see like the little finials that line the roof line <sighs> all the framework the crate is full of glass right there i just can't i i don't know it's just like not even real to me yet i think i'm gonna have to see it up for it to be real like when the truck arrived yesterday it was kind of like this out of body <laughs> like when they opened the truck door i think i got i took a video of it as they were opening the truck door and like the guys actually fly in there's two guys that from hartley botanic that fly into the area and they um, receive the order. They receive the shipment, they make sure it's all here, and then they fly back. Like one of them was from Massachusetts. Maybe both of them were from Massachusetts. But anyway, um, yeah, so they come in, they receive the order, and then they're gonna come back here in a couple weeks to do the assembly. So yeah, Hartley has their own team that takes care of all of that, um, which is, a, it's been a really interesting process. Um, this yard back here, uh, haven't really done much except for I didn't wanna show you the sunflowers. <laughs> So like randomly, I have this container right here that I ran drip to two years ago, planted it the first year. Last year, I didn't do a thing to it. I never put a single plant in it. And this year I didn't plant anything in it. So somebody else is planting things for me around here. And I just left all the sunflowers in there and thought, well, they're trying. So I'm just gonna leave stuff where it's at. Uh, we've got some, oh, this is beautiful. Look, Erin, I didn't even realize it had blooms yet. The Blue Chiffon Rosa Sharon. Gosh, that's so pretty. This is actually a standard. It's not like a full shrub. It's got a trunk um, that's maybe like two feet tall. And then this canopy, which is kind of perfect to tuck into borders like this, because then you can have like all of these lilies will bloom here really soon um, and they can fill in below it. There's also some peonies back here, um, some coral charm peonies that bloomed beautifully this year. I think I took pictures of those. Uh, Miss Violet Budlia, looking gorgeous. And just a lot of stuff, a lot of random perennials in here. Um, this is a laced up black lace elderberry. Thought you guys might be interested to see the growth habit of this one versus the uh, growth habit of the black lace. Did I say this was a, this is a laced up elderberry. 
not a laced up black lace elderberry. I think that's what I just said. Those are two different plants. Laced up black lace. So that one, I think the tag says they get six to 10 feet tall. They easily get 10 feet tall here in our area, maybe even taller. They do so well here. And then this one has a very narrow growth habit. So you can get the same kind of texture and color and the bloom uh, discs right here without needing so much space to accommodate it. These lilies were here when we moved in and I love them. I love this bank of grassy texture and I actually really like the color. The orange is really beautiful, especially like they'll open up here um, when the sun hits them and they look really pretty with the black lace as a background. You can see our alliums. We still need to cut those back. I was kind of waiting though because there's no entry point to this garden. You have to put a ladder here and like, like just jump in. You can see there's Nepeta in there that the bees have been just been feeding on and I don't want to trample any of that. So I'm kind of waiting for the nepeta to bloom out and then I'll go in and cut everything back at the same time. In the meantime, the little allium spheres look pretty good. My mom actually might want to use those down at the garden center again, I'm not sure. I should ask her. Then maybe she'll come over and jump in there to get them. Um, this bed here is one we planted a while ago and things have, uh, like the hydrangeas were very chlorotic last year just like i feel like i'm saying that about every plant but it's kind of true we were having such an issue with that there's five hydrangeas in here um, and they also had cane borers i found boring insects inside the stems i've never seen that in hydrangeas before so like this spring when i came out to do cleanup i inspected the plants really thoroughly i moved removed any stem i saw any frass or any like it looks like sawdust and it's kind of just the leavings of when a insect bores into a cane and they kind of kick out all the sawdust basically and so you can easily spot when that's going on so i was able to remove most of the damage without treating with any kind of insecticide i haven't noticed any damage yet um, and then the leaves are starting to really turn around i am trying to rogue out this this is a japanese anemone right here that just spreads itself everywhere and I, like, I want to get rid of it in this bed because it's not great actually for this space because this one gets a lot of sun in the afternoon and Japanese anemones tend to wilt a lot in our sun and burn. So like they look okay now, but uh, you know, toward the end of summer, they'll look really tired and crispy. Um, so I've been trying to get those out of here so that we can have these other things fill in. But the Wizard of Oz Veronica looks really good right now. I'm really happy with that, how that's going. Pink Diamonds Dicentra right there. Okay, moving forward. Erin switched me angles really quick. It's hard with the sun, right? Um, anyway, uh, there's some sedum right in here. There's day lilies, some Tratoscantia, the spider wart right here that's in bloom. There's like a light color, like a white with a lavender center, which is actually really pretty. Look at that. Honeybees clearly love it. They're all over it and then a darker colored one. The coral berry that I cut back to 12 inches is looking great, it's starting to bloom. If you guys wanna see what the coral berry blooms look like, here you go. They're small and very dainty. Can we see that? <laughs> Maybe, but they are followed by the most glorious pink berries ever. So I think this one really likes its spot. Uh, the, are these fire lights, Erin? Can't remember. Firelight hydrangeas here are just starting to, like you can see all the buds on the plants, um, and some of them are starting to open. They are looking better. You treated these too, didn't you? I don't know, I don't know how long that chelated, like how long it takes for that chelated iron to take effect, but I did do soil acidifier this spring. I'm sure you did as well. Um, we did iron tone, and then with the chelated iron, they are doing a lot better than they have in the past as well. So anyway, oh, here's like a really pretty one, the most full bloom so far. I love it. This bed has been interesting though, like throughout the years, every time I plant it, things do really well and like they're big on this side and then they eventually get really small and struggle toward that side. And I think it might have to do with the willow being right there. Maybe the willow roots like kind of rob all of the moisture and nutrients from that spot right there. I'm not sure. But I think that this was a good, instead of doing annuals in this area every year, this is really a nice change. Uh, let's head toward the vegetable garden. The vegetable garden is still in shade right now. Not for long though, I don't think. Everything's looking pretty good in this area. Sweet Romance Lavender Hedge looks great. There's a couple that are a little weak, but like these right here, I actually had to space further apart than the rest because there's an electrical like access box. I'm not sure exactly where it's at, but I think it's like right 
it's right in between the lavender. Um, so I think maybe I'll have to replace one eventually, but I could honestly, like this one has spread itself around. Like I could dig that one up later, the one that's kind of under the fence. And I could just put that one right here. I think that would work out just perfectly. I love it though, it's such a pretty color. Let's head in right here. I started to prune these Colette roses back, the other, not these. On the other side, you see one side is like pruned and nice and the other side isn't. I need to come in and shear these up really big time. I let them go because they were so gorgeous and so full of color, but then you get to a point where you have a hard time walking through them. So we'll just run through the raised beds really quick. I've got a Maisel Basil and this three by four right here. Right behind me, we've got the Garden Gem Tomatoes with Petite Marigolds that we seeded in here recently, just around the exterior. This three by four has Walla Walla onions, which are starting to really bulb up nicely after I figured out that they weren't getting uh, water as consistently as I thought. Anyway, they're doing really well now. Uh, we've got beans in this bed here. Uh, this bed has carrots, onions, there's beets on the back side. This bed right here, you can see I pulled this one up the other day. I got some dahlias, mystic lavender, and um, right after I planted them, that night we had a 50 mile an hour dust storm that blew through. And so some of them like that one is actually cracked at the base. I left it cause I thought, well, maybe it'll be okay. <laughs> but several of them, they were just like flat and cracked and I, and uh, yeah. So I need to kind of like, I'll move this one over and then plant something different right here. That just happens occasionally. Here we've got um, some hot and heavy peppers. There's some nasturtiums coming up in this area. A couple of good hearted tomatoes and some dill. We've got calendula coming up in this bed here and some red cabbage that I need to harvest. Um, this bed has garden treasure tomatoes and petite marigolds, glass gem corn that was seeded recently, anemones, whoo, sorry cheddar, anemones that I need to dig here very soon. And then this bed has a volunteer sunflower, some buried treasure strawberries and some onions, just kind of a mishmash of things. So yeah, right here, you can see this side's like really nice and then I need to keep working on this side. Everything just kind of halts though when it's so hot. So we'll just hang on and like chip away at stuff as we can. On the west side, I want to show you it right in here. This instant karma elderberry has grown into a complete beast. It's just, it's huge. And you can't see my white glitter oryngium that I planted in here, but you can if you look back in here. Look at this. So if I kind of do this, look at these. Aren't those so gorgeous? I started these from seed last year and they produced a couple of stocks for me last year, but this year they're just beautiful. Oh, look at, and we've got some color still on these Colettes. They're a little bit more shaded, so they lasted a little longer. Right across the walkway, look at the Daisy Mays. Aren't those incredible? We'll show you a big stand of them here on the other end of this walkway. They're just amazing. We haven't done a ton of planting over here, you can see. I mean, we have these that we planted last year, the white wands of Veronica. There's a white echinacea. I think they're absolutely beautiful. And then I have this Northwinds maple sitting here in the hole where the crab apple, we dug the crab apple out. And um, I'm kind of glad we didn't plant it because it was at, I bought this at a point where this was a lot smaller. And this has just become such a beast that I would need to plant this way over. That actually looks a lot better having that not right up, <laughs> right up next to it. But I kind of want something right here. I want something like middle of the brick pathway, something big and gorgeous. And I don't think that this is it because it's off to the side and I kind of want something more like the crab apple that has some spring bloom and some interest in the fall and winter uh, and so forth. So that's another reason why we may move this somewhere else. I might try one more year and cut it all the way back to the ground and see if that size controls it a little bit better. Those elderberries though, they love our area. Um, in the urns, you'll notice I do have some different plants than I started with. So I've got Supertunia Limoncello and Supertunia Royal Velvet. I swapped out for the Double Moon Glow is what I had in there. And they were not doing well. They were not thriving. I couldn't figure out what was going on. We kept testing the water. They were getting plenty of moisture. I would come over here and feel the soil just to make sure like it wasn't too soggy or they weren't too dry. And it was none of that, I don't think. Um, when I started to pull the plants out, cause I just thought we've got to, 
I gotta get these out of here because half of them were kind of like dry and crispy. Um, their roots were like this long and that big around. It's like they never rooted out very well from their plug. Um, and so anyway, we'll just have to see. I've got a few more in cans that I might try to put into their own pot, see what they do. The ones that I put in the vegetable garden pots though are looking pretty good. So it could just be this, this spot right here. Maybe they got nailed in a windstorm and it set them back, who knows? That's very possible. You know what, we should um, hop over on that side. There's more things going on over here and then we'll go to the end. Let's go in the arbor right here. We've got a porcelain vine right on this arbor here, which I really like. Erin thinks it looks like it's struggling all the time and I think it's because of the variegation. So it has like this white speckly variegation that's irregular, which kind of looks like spider mite damage. Like I won't lie, it kind of <laughs> does look like spider mite damage, but I know what a porcelain vine is supposed to look like. So to me, I don't see that, but I can see where you're like, well, do we need to spray that plant? <laughs> no, but it's followed like these little buds right here. Flowers followed by the most beautiful blue and pink berries. I really like it. Can you hear the drip system singing right now? Can you hear that in my audio? It's like squealing. Um, this area is filling in, you know, kind of slowly but surely we're just adding stuff. A lot of this stuff came from other areas of the garden. So this was up above our pondless waterfall. It's doing great despite the fact that it gets full afternoon sun. Like you can see the break in the maples there and the sun just barrels through here. And so it's kind of burning the hostas a little bit. Kind of didn't think about that. I always move stuff in the spring when it's mild and I think, oh, this plant's going to get the perfect amount of sun. And then I don't really think through. Like, how am I still not thinking right about this? I've been gardening for a long, long time. Anyway, one day, well, I probably won't ever get it right. That's okay, I'll just keep moving plants around. Um, Golden Dreams Coleus, right below the Japanese maple and some purple Shibli Lamium. I love Lamium, it's such an amazing ground cover. Um, so I was excited to put that there because that'll fill in this whole space and be beautiful. Longwort, I actually uh, moved these from in front underneath the crabapple tree. They moved without skipping a beat. They bloomed beautifully this spring. I love the variegation on the leaves. The little lime punch hydrangeas, which we just planted recently, like a couple weeks ago now, uh, right before the heat wave, but they haven't like faltered at all. They've just looked great every single day. No wilting, nothing. They just look good. That is encouraging to me. Um, this space, I've got like a lot of perennials. I'm kind of waiting. That's the thing, like if you want to gather seeds off stuff, you kind of got to wait till they mature. This is a foxglove right here. Check this out. Look at how many seeds. Like you think about how much you pay for seeds and that's like what you get in a packet. I don't know how many hundreds of uh, foxglove seed is right there in my hand, but it came out of one flower and look at how many flowers. Not that I'm going to sell these, <laughs> but it's just so fun to be able to gather some of your own stuff and grow it that way. So that's why I've kind of let these go and I kind of want them to self seed in this area too. They're really pretty uh, kind of peachy pink color. Uh, the lavender looks great. I'm really happy with that. I did plant some dahlias right back here. They're starting to come up. I planted them late. So they're in this space right here. Um, I'll cut the delphiniums back. Maybe I'll go around today and do some like just cutting back and, and weeding and stuff like that. It's not until you do a tour till you're like, like maybe I should have done a little bit of uh, primping before, <laughs> before I did this tour. Uh, you get to the end of the walkway here and it kind of just stops and this is where the new lawn, well, we're not, not right here, this will be brick walkway. There'll still be an access to the driveway right there. The new walkway will follow a fairly similar trajectory. It'll be a little bit wider, so we're gonna cut into this just a little bit because it was a very narrow walkway and that will go up to our front stairs. I just planted this corner up with bleeding hearts, white ones, Hudson Bay hostas. Those will be my perennials in this area. And then we've got Golden Dreams Coleus, Surefire Rose Begonias, and some uh, sweet potato vine in the front there. And I'm kind of hoping the sweet potato vine just kind of wants stuff to just <laughs> fill in and cover all of this dirt. They're almost done though. The guys are here, I think maybe, maybe buttoning up. They just had some boxes to cover, I think. And they were running sprinklers in this area the other day, testing them. And so I'm hoping that we're really, really close to being done. So we can, st well, I don't know that we'll seed grass quite yet. Probably not during this heat wave. I don't know what you're thinking. If he's gone. <laughs> so we'll, we'll at least have the capability though of turning on the water when we have a huge windstorm coming so we can wet down the area enough to where it's not a huge dust bowl. And that will be really nice. Our limelight hydrangeas are looking just really nice. 
a lot of buds on the center one, a few buds on this one, and this one's just starting to bud up right now. I was kind of getting worried there for a minute because like this one was putting on so much more growth, like it's a little taller and I couldn't see any buds. I'm like, is this gonna be a, like a naked bush? Is it gonna not have any, um, any blooms on it? And I could see it starting to push some buds. So that makes me happy. Every year these have been solid, so I'm not too worried about it. The pots are usually right here, but everything's just kind of in a little bit of disarray based on what's going on. But you can see we were messing with bricks right here just to see how wide we wanted the pathway to be. And I think we ended up with, was it 80 inches, Erin? Does that sound right? I think we were, we thought 80 inches. And if you look at the white flags, it actually goes, the white flags indicate the pathway and they go all the way out to the driveway, like way out there, um, because it was the only place that made any sense because you want your pathways to lead to something or to, you know what I mean? Like, um, you don't want it just to like head off into the driveway at a random spot. So this way it kind of like, um, direct traffic flow, I guess you could say, because we have parking out there. And so if people park out there, then they can naturally come to this walkway and walk up to the door instead of like walking to the driveway, then walking down the driveway a little ways and then finding a pathway into the house, if that makes sense. It also will shoot you out kind of to the flower garden. In fact, let's walk out there a little bit so you can kind of see the trajectory. This is all going to be flower bed, no grass on this side. So it's just gonna be a super deep morning shade, fairly, or I mean morning sun <laughs> rather morning sun fairly shady in the afternoon flower bed except for out here it's pretty sunny but it comes all the way out here and this is why we had to make it so wide because it's so long and this area is so big it had to be wide so it comes right out to here so it leads you out to the flower garden or to parking it just made the most sense to us and then over here we have um a is it like three or four foot flower bed where we're going to probably do lavender and boxwoods on either side of the uh, walkway and then this side will all be grass and shade trees things like that let's head up toward the house up here so i can kind of explain what's going to happen here so this right here will be grass and the grass will come straight up to the concrete in between this beam right here and the beam where the pink flag is right there so the three beams three beams wide, which is awesome because Aaron and I and the kids actually come up here and sit and stare at our dirt <laughs> a lot. We spend a lot of evenings in this space. Um, there will be flower bed. You can see the grass sprinkler here, but the flower bed will start here and it will come out further than it is now. Let's see. And it will meet the walkway about here. So this will be a lot deeper on this side. Um, we are thinking the reason why we aren't continuing the brick walkway from the driveway so it'll come over and meet this walkway from like the parking area but we're not going to bring it this way yet because we're kind of thinking we might we might move this beam over and put in a set of double doors right here from inside and put in like because we want to do like a wraparound porch a little bit i mean it's technically like a wraparound but we actually kind of want to build it up a little bit like one step up um, and kind of have a little bit more of an elevated look to it and cover all this concrete. Actually, we'll get rid of all the concrete, right, Erin? Because a lot of it doesn't, a lot of it slopes to the house. <laughs> so like water pools up against the house instead of like going out the way it should. So I think we want to kind of get rid of those types of things and do it properly. Um, but I think that that would make a lot of sense in this area from the inside of our house perspective. Um, so I don't know, we need to get like some mock-ups like digital renderings of the front of the house with some different ideas of what we can do to make this space work. So in the end, because this area may change fairly significantly, we didn't really want to put in brick walkway until that happens. So you can like kind of hop off. We'll have an access point from uh, like a break in the box with lavender uh, hedge to get into the grass. So you can just walk over here if you want to. Um, on this side over here, we will have another short brick walkway. So it'll go from here in between these two beams and it'll actually just come out and meet the grass. Where's my white line? Right here. So it'll come meet the grass. Um, we'll have like a little miniature flower bed here. There'll probably be some kind of a neat evergreen or something, or maybe a container. And then all of this is gonna be flower bed. So if you look at the white lines, I'll kind of walk it right here. But this is all gonna be flower bed in here. 
because it's really hard to get grass to grow underneath this ash tree because of all the roots. You can see all the surface roots under here. It was always a huge pain to mow and a huge pain to get the grass to look nice. So we thought, well, we can do like a dry shade kind of flower bed area, maybe do a little seating spot underneath it. But it actually goes all the way out here. So all of this will be flower bed. And I'll keep walking. Oh, I got my shit stepped, stepped in that pile of dirt. Uh, it comes out all the way to the lane over here. Um, and then, so the main lane right here, which this tree is doing great, you guys, the one that got kind of rocked by delivery car, it's doing like fine, just as good as the other trees. Um, we may do like some kind of really neat fountain in this area or something. And I don't really necessarily think we'll have walkways through this flower bed, but I just want it to be really deep and full of beautiful things as you approach it, because there's gonna be a, so much grass out here. I want it to have big, uh, like significantly sized flower beds up here. We have a lot of infrastructure in this area here. Um, this is a, our water system access. There's um, pipes right in there. There's electrical. Uh, we have a frost free. Is that frost free? No, not a frost free, but at least a hose out here so that we can water things that we're, you know, trying to get established. But that'll make it very interesting over here. There's gravel from our old driveway. So the driveway that I'm looking at, you know, that used to go in the front of our house, they just scraped all of that over and we're gonna reuse that on the new driveway, which still hasn't been graveled yet. Um, we will be taking out this white picket fence. Eventually, Aaron would do it today if, if I was wanting to. Um, but we'll, we'll get rid of this and we're gonna kind of retool. So like all of this is gonna be flower bed. This will just be a continuation. Um, so I'm not sure what's gonna happen with the boxwoods. These were butted up against a fence until earlier this year. Um, but to incorporate this whole area, we'll kind of change some of this stuff. Not a lot of it, but some of it. These containers are doing really well. Look what happens during our windstorms though. Look at this. The dust just comes through and it just, I never even really thought about that. I'm kind of glad it's vinyl though and not wood. I mean, we considered putting a wood fence up around the new property and then like slowly replacing this with black, a black wood fence. Kind of glad we didn't because it's so easy to clean. Like, I don't know, maybe you wouldn't, what, what are your thoughts on that? I'm kind of interested. I don't know. Like, I feel like if that dust was on the black, it would make it look like kind of like gray all the time. And then you don't want to be like constantly spraying down a wood fence, I, I would imagine. You just break it down faster. I don't know. So usually like Aaron's out here, he was out here the other night hosing down our whole fence to clean it off. Um, these pots are doing just fantastic. Super Tunia, Vista Bubblegum, Super Bean Sparkling Rose. The Salvia is not really keeping up. Um, well, it is in a cup, well, like two containers. It may just need some time. Sometimes annuals just sit for a little while and then they'll take off. This is a new one for 2020, so I was excited to kind of see what it would do. Um, and it may not just keep up with the vigor of these other two plants. This one's looking really nice though. Look at that. I like the color a lot. I think the color is beautiful with the other pinks. And then let's head over to, I think we'll probably end our tour right over here. You can see the view of where the Hartley is. Oh, it's gonna be so gorgeous. I planted up these containers the other night. There were some blue spruces in there. Look at this, Erin. Oh, I have visions of you with your loppers out here later. Trees just do this after a windstorm, like we'll have a bunch of droopy stuff anyway. I guess an easy way to get some lower limbs trimmed, makes them accessible. But there were blue spruces in here that weren't getting quite enough sun. So I had a friend that actually wanted them. So she took them to her house and I've got skyrocket penicetums in the center now, dipped in wine coleus, some double up pink begonias, Laguna cloud white lobelia and the ivy that was already in there. I think they're really pretty. I do not have drip to these pots. I was kind of thinking of how I could run that the other day, but for now we're just hand watering. And I don't know, I'm, I'm wondering about this crab apple. I'm wondering if we're gonna want to do something different right there to kind of frame the view of the Hartley and not block it. It's gonna be an interesting process, I think. I wanna show you how these pots are doing up here. We've got the unplugged pink growing inside here, which is looking pretty good next to the uh, denim and lace Russian sage, which is just starting to show some color. 
I love it this time of year when it's so hot. It's like loving its life and just coming into its own. I love, love, have loved it in this area ever since we planted it. And then the last thing are these pots right here, which I've really been enjoying. We've got a Prince Tut in the center with Whirlwind Pink Scavola, the Be My, I think, First Love Calla Lilies. They're doing really good in these pots up here. They get quite a bit of sun. Uh, Lime Time Coleus, which I need to keep pruned a bit until these are done, until the flowers, the flowers and the callas last about 12 weeks. When those kind of fade, I'll let the coleus get a little bit bigger. I have a newly noir on the backside coleus as well, so those can kind of take over. Uh, Diamond Snow Euphorbias, they're absolutely gorgeous. Whirlwind Pink Scavola um, right there at Icicles Helichrysum. Hippo Rose Hypoestes right there, polka dot plant. And I wanted to focus on things that didn't spill as much. I'm kind of like not feeling the spillers in all my containers this year. I kind of wanted to see the beauty of the containers as well. Um, and here we've got as our centerpiece plant, which is kind of like cruising to the side. It needs to, needs to be in the center. This is a Truffula Pink Gomfrina, couple of Coleus, Newly Noir, Icicles Helichrysum, Diamond Snow, Superbina Sparkling Amethyst around the front there. Just been a really fun uh, mixture of plants. Really liking it. So same thing on that side right there. The last thing I want to show you is the Superbina Sparkling Amethyst up here around Persephone. I think it looks so great. Um, I love the fact that it's like a little bit tidier than Supertunias is what we typically put in this area. And they fill in really fast. And I honestly don't even mind if this doesn't fill all the way in. I just like the, the pop of purple here and they're holding up to overhead water beautifully. That's the thing, whatever we put in here, this is not drip irrigated, it gets sprinkler water, um, which is hard on our stuff because we have such hard water. Uh, so these are doing really well, makes me happy. And that is it for our June garden tour. Ton of stuff going on, of course. You know, there's everything out on the new property that we didn't even talk about. Um, otherwise, I, I feel like this, this tour is probably really long. We'll probably need to do a separate one for out there. Um, we did uh, the new things going on out there. Uh, we had a blackberry bed built, which is identical to our raspberry bed. So now we have three. We had a grape structure put up behind them. Uh, and then we've just kind of like been planting things in the cut flower garden, but I've been showing you those in videos. So we'll probably wait until things put on a little bit more growth in there and then we'll do a full garden tour out at that space so anyway thank you guys so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it I hope it looked okay I don't know that we've ever done a sunrise tour so the lighting might be a little bit weird I don't know um, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway we'll see you in the next video